Hello and welcome back to A Year of Poetry with Randall Eckstein. This week we're looking at two poems which are somewhat opposite. In our first poem, we're going to be looking at a relationship that hasn't started yet. It's a relationship that is... Well, I noticed a, a few months ago that there was a, a certain person that I felt pleased when they were nearby. That uh, when I saw this person, I felt lighter, felt more... Um, I felt I wanted to, to, to express more or, or do more. And I realized that this was the beginning of a passion that, quite honestly, had to stop because I'm a married man. But I realized that this feeling, this is the chase. This is what men really enjoy. That chase is so intoxicating. But once you get what you're chasing, the intoxication is gone. There's no more, it's a, it's a done thing. Um, that, that feeling of being so close but not touching, it ends once you touch. So this poem, Gyroscopes, it came about from that, from that recognition that, that this was happening. Gyroscopes. Gyroscopes of passion. Magnetic interaction, feeling the vibrations of your ministrations, I find myself again your gravity within, pulled closer by the spin until I nearly twin the breaths you take, the way you shake, my lustful yearning ache, I'm willing you to slake. Shall we spin forever, so close but not together, in tandem but dissevered longing for each other? But if we were to touch, our passions would erupt, and spent would then corrupt to fade away from lust. I need you in my sight to pine and to ignite the gyroscopic light of my passion's yearning flight. Now, just for the for the uh, uh, complete story, I don't see that person anymore. Uh, that person came into my life, went out of my life, and, and there's nothing. But I did get this poem from it, so uh, I'm very glad that uh, that I was able to recognize that and, and put it into words and I really like this poem I think this one it really catches something something that that I feel the next poem that I want to read was actually written many many years ago uh, back when I was a single man when I was uh, just writing and uh, I've always been taken by the story of Lysistrata. I love ancient Greek uh, dramas. I love ancient Greek literature. And uh, if you know the story of Lysistrata, uh, is a story about, or is a play, I shouldn't say story, is a play about uh, a group of women. The Grecians were at war for years and years and years with this group. And the women were tired of their husbands going out and dying or going out to war and coming home drunk. And uh, all they wanted to do was was uh, make love. And so Lysistrata got all the women folks together and she said, what we're going to do, we're going to go up on the top of the buildings. We're going to stand naked. And we're going to tell the men, well, here we are. When you stop fighting, you can come and get us. But until the fighting stops, you're not getting any. And it worked. It got those men to stop fighting. So this poem is, is titled Old Lysistrata. It doesn't deal with the story, but it uses that story to uh, compare with. The, the poem Old Lysistrata. Cold as they come, she was. Swift with a hip and tight with the collar she brought, and old Lysistrata had nothing on her. She could look with a smirk that would boil your blood and lower her neckline an inch. She'd whisper in your ear if you were good, and if you were bad, she'd kind of just nod. How well it was known by the people who saw her that she was a fine howdy-do. And war may be one thing, but peacetime is different. A man has his needs, don't you know? Oh, how very well she knew. 
Lysistrata said, if you fight, you can't do it. But this girl, why, she's got so many rules it would take me a lifetime to name them. Haven't the Ice Ages come and gone and ravished our world in between? So where did she get the ice in her veins that enveloped her soul like a cave? So this is old Lysistrata, and it's a little... It's a little uh, friend-zoned. Uh, this poem was written before the term friend-zoned became a thing. Uh, this was, this was uh, long, long ago. I, I do think about this poem sometimes. Uh, like I said, I, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for, for old Greek literature. I have a kind of uh, standby when I'm feeling writer's block, when I can't think of what to write next. I go back to the big three. And the big three for me are Norse mythology, uh, Greek mythology, and the King Arthur and the Round Table. Anybody in that mythology. So uh, this is Strata definitely. Uh, she's in the Greek mythology for me. She's not exactly a goddess, but, but definitely part of that group. So there we have uh, our two uh, opposing poems. I hope you liked them. Join us next week where we will have some new poems. Uh, I'm going to the countryside of China to this week, and hopefully I'll write something very naturalistic. Uh, so look forward to that. Thanks for joining us. See you next week.